Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Trinosphere where Timmy, Johnny, and Spike battle over all things EDH. Today we're going to be battling with decks we don't know what do, with commanders we don't know who are. We have this episode we're going to dub Jamie's Deck Extravaganza. Our CDH playing friend Jamie built each of us decks. One for the Timmy, one for the Johnny, one for the Spike. And we don't even know what they do. We don't even know who the commander is. All we know is the CMC of those commanders. We also built Jamie a deck for Jamie to play against us, so this will be a very interesting episode. Uh, they, unfortunately, the audio quality of this gameplay was quite terrible, so instead of making you listen to that awful noise, you'll be listening to me, which may be worse. I apologize. I won the die roll. I'm on the bottom right, and I, I know my commander costs two black or red, so it is Rakdos. I start off with the foreboding ruins and pass to Juan, the Timmy, in the bottom left. His commander is mono green. He starts off with a Boreal Druid, which is pretty good. In the top left is Hog the Spike, starting off with a Mountain and passing to Jamie. Jamie starts off with a Jeweled Amulet. Pretty interesting card. The old roll em up, wind up mocks. Passes to me. I play a Phyrexian Tower and a Stitcher Supplier, revealing a, of, of those three cards, one's a Sire of Insanity, putting everyone on notice. I pass to Juan. And Juan will follow up his Mana Dork with another Mana Dork, Finhorn Elves, and then, true to most games, randomly hits Hog with his Mana Dork, putting Hog at 39. Hog's gonna hit a second Mountain and pass, looking a little terrified at that point. And Jamie is going to cast, on Jamie's turn, a Dark Ritual, putting everyone on notice. Everyone's a little scared. Jamie's gonna follow that with a Gaunty Lord of Luxury, revealing the commander that we designed for Jamie. Jamie's gonna choose me to look at the top four cards of my deck and steal one for later use. Jamie still has more plays, including a Manifold Key, and then Jamie passes to me. I'm gonna miss a land drop here, so I'm just gonna hodl with my Stitcher Supplier and pass to Juan. Juan is wondering what his commander is, but he knows it is not a Gore Claw because that was, in fact, in his hand. And he's going to poke Hog here again for another one, putting him at 38. Hog is going to draw, not hit a land again, and discard a recurring insight and pass to Jamie. Not a great showing for Hog so far. Jamie is going to draw, play a Swamp and a Mishra's Bobble, and then cast a Necropotence. Jamie's gonna choose to lose five and draw five. And Jamie's gonna pass to me here. I managed to hit a land drop here. I'm going to use Phyrexian Tower to sacrifice Stitcher Supplier. And I'm going to reveal my commander, who I have a sneaking suspicion since we're at Graveyards, is Chainer, Nightmare Adept. who to thunk? This Rakdos deck is Graveyard-centric, so it was, it was a guess on my part. I'm not used to playing Chainer though, so this will be a lot of fun. Juan's going to take a stab at his commander, who he was correct in guessing was Nylia Keen-Eyed. So this is a mono green deck that is all about discounting big fat beaters. He's going to cast a Primordial Sage on the cheap and then swing his Gore Claw at me, which I will not block, taking five. Passing to Hog here, who's going to miss yet another land drop, discarding a card and passing to Jamie. Jamie's going to play a Fetch Land and crack it. These spikes love their deck thin theory. Jamie's also going to lose one draw, one and pass. I'm going to use Chainer to discard a card so I can reanimate Burning Tree Vandal from my graveyard. Using Riot, giving it haste, or a plus one, plus one counter. I'd already had haste. I'm going to use that to just loot. I'm going to swing and then uh, draw and discard. Discard and draw. I'm going to pass on to Juan here, who's going to play a Voracious Hydra, having it enter the battlefield and fight my chainer so sad days for me sad days he's gonna go to combat here attacking me with Gorklaw again and using nylia to attack hog so i'm gonna go down to 30 here and hog's gonna go down to 33 oh i'm sorry he attacked uh attacked jamie with nylia and hog with primordial sage Hog is going to manage to hit a land drop here and then cast a Skittering Surveyor so he can finally stabilize his mana base situation, even though he's a two turns back. Jamie is going to activate... Jamie's going to activate Necropotence to lose one and draw one in pass turn. Uh, 
I'm going to cast a Rakdos Signet and follow it up with a Doomed Necromancer and pass the turn. Just trying to present some kind of blockers here and get my graveyard shenanigans geared up again. So one's gonna draw for turn. He think he activated his Nylee at the end of my turn, but managed to not hit anything. He's gonna go to combat and swing. Uh, both the Primal Sage and, and Gorklaw at Hog, who's gonna do no blocks. And then he's also gonna send six at uh, Jamie, who's gonna no block. And then he's gonna use a Savage Swipe to have Nylia fight my doomed Necromancer. He's gonna follow that up with a Garrick Primal Hunter, and then roll that down to draw six cards off of his Nylia. So once again, showing that uh, green can do it all. Remove it, draw it, ramp it. Gonna pass you Hog, who's still sitting on three lands, but he has that fourth from that Skittering Surveyor. He's gonna cast a Cisse's Ring, and then he's gonna tap that Cisse's Ring for some mana here to play a Prismatic Lens and pass the turn. Jamie's gonna roll up that Mox. Jamie's gonna cast an Ad Nauseum here, so here we go. Let's see what this deck can do. First hit is a Culling the Weak, losing one life. Then a Mind Stone, losing two more life for a total of three. Then a Phyrexian Arena, losing three more life for a total of six. Then a Go for the Throat for a total of eight. An Inquisition of Kozlek, a total of nine. Plunge into Darkness, total of 11. Prismatic Lens, total of thir uh, 14, no, 13. And then Vampiric total, total of 14. So he loses 14 life with that ad, na ad nauseum, drawing a ton of cards. So Jamie's now at seven life. Jamie's gonna play a Lotus Petal and crack that. And then going to cast a Go for the Throat, killing the Primordial Sage. With the rest of Jamie's mana, Jamie will put out an Eternal Scourge, thus revealing the deck is actually Gaunti Food Chain. So this is a, a sort of CDH deck that looks to steal somebody else's food chain. Unfortunately, there's no other food chains. And there might be one in, uh, there might be in Juan's, de Juan's deck. I will untap and play a Corpse Connoisseur to go and fetch a card from the deck to put in my graveyard. And I do believe that'll be a Stinkweed Imp. I'll pass to Juan, who will just start Revving this green engine again by starting off with an Eternal Witness to put Primordial Sage back into his hand. And then cast it for a measly three mana because of both, both Gore Claw and Keen Eye redu reducing the cost of that spell. So now he'll just start firing off spells at rapid pace here, play an Incubation Druid draw card. And then play a Arbor Elf to draw a card. And then a Nylia's Huntmaster, giving uh, plus a lot to Nylia. I believe it's uh, plus 11 to Nylia. So uh, it also gives Trample, so I'll do no blocks here and just take 17 from Nylia. Um, and then he'll send two to Jamie, which sets Jamie at five, and Hog's at 23. On Hog's turn, Hog will play a Is It Signet? And then follow that up with a Indomitable Creativity, targeting Goreclaw, Primordial Sage, and his own Prismatic Lens. So Goreclaw will turn into a Pelucranos. Primordial Sage will turn into a Birds of Paradise. Prismatic Lens will turn into a Solemn Simulacrum. So that's not bad. Once again, getting Hog kind of caught up on mana and giving him a blocker. So after that, Hog will pass to Jamie. Jamie's at five life with 12 Nylia damage. Jamie will play a Mind Stone and pass. He's, Jamie's stuck under a Necropotence with five life, unable to draw cards. I'll cast a Angie's Ravager and then follow that up with a Felden of the Third Path. I also let 
everyone know that I do have a decent Flare the Haybound in my graveyard. On Juan's turn, he'll play a Beast Whisperer, so now he has multiple two-draw engines online whenever he casts a creature. He's going to play a Thrashing Brontodon to draw two. He'll go to combat and swing two at, ja uh, two at Jamie, and then he'll swing a Ferris Band Brawler and, Ni and Nylia at me, and a Plukronos at Hog. Hog will block the Plukronos, Jamie will take two, and I block both of the attackers coming at me, preserving my measly 13 life total. So right now, life total is Jamie's at 3, I'm at 13, Hog's at 23, and Juan is untouched at 40. At the end of Juan's turn, Jamie is going to Vampiric Tutor going down to 1. And then also crack Mishra's Bobble to draw the card that gets Vampiric Tutored on top of Jamie's library. So Jamie's at 1 life, living on the edge. This is how Spikes like to play. Tight gameplay, that's what it's about. Hog is deep in the tank about his turn because he's going to start off with a efficient construction. He's going to guess at his commander. He's pretty sure what it is, but not entirely sure, but does reveal Sahili the Gifted. He's going to roll Sahili up, giving him his next spell, Affinity to Artifacts. So he'll, he's going to get this Thran Dynamo on the cheap. And then, of course, efficient construction generates a Thopter. He's going to tap that Thran Dynamo to play a... Power Stone Shard triggering efficient construction to make a second Thopter. So just generating some blockers for his Nile or his uh um his Sahili. Gonna pass to Jamie, who's going to roll up jeweled amulet and untap. Now Jamie's at one life, unable to draw cards due to Necropotence or activate Necropotence. So just living living a, a miserable life here. But does cast a black sun zenith X equals to five. In response, Juan's going to crack Thrashing Brant Brantodon to destroy Thran Dynamo. Juan's then going to activate uh, Nyla Kenai twice, hitting a Loathsome Chimera and a Elysian Caryatid, putting both of those cards into his hand. Then, Black Sun's going to resolve, wiping the slate clean. Also putting five negative one negative one counters on Nylia before Nylia becomes an enchantment. So if Nylia ever becomes a creature, it's a measly zero one. I'll take this opportunity to recast Chainer, who has haste due to his strange ability. Uh, and I'll use that haste to crack Sahili for three, bring Sahili down to two, and then pass the turn. Juan's going to start off his turn with Anissa, who shakes the world, making all of his force produce extra. He's going to roll Nissa up to animate one of his force into a three three or three plus one plus one counters on a zero zero body. I'm gonna tap four mana for a elemental bond. Another draw engine, and then follow that up with some creatures, but you know, a loathsome chimera drawing off of the elemental bond. And then going to go to combat, going to send his forest in to kill Sahili. On a second main, it's gonna tap that forest to cast a Elysian Caryatid. Passing to Hog, who despite having uh, produced a ton of blockers and commander and, and played a lot of cards, is now back to uh, nothing. Suspiciously leaves all of his mana open and passes the turn to Jamie. Jamie, struggling to draw cards here, reveals the card he stole from me earlier in the game, Ox of Agonis, discarding his hand and drawing three, so still managing to stay alive despite being at one life with a Necropotence in play. Unable to draw cards for turn. Jamie draws three and passes the turn. I dredge a Stinkweed Imp for turn. And then I use Chainer to reanimate Doomed Necromancer, putting a Doomed Necromancer to play. Then I'll sacrifice Doomed Necromancer because Chainer gave it haste. And I'll use that to put an Archfiend of Ifner into play. And then I will cycle a Faithless Looting. So this will trigger Archfiend of Ifner to give all creatures negative two. In response, Hog is going to reveal the fact that he, why he kept all his mana, but he's going to explode, expansion, explosion, explosion for X equals six. So he's going to do six damage to Juan's Nissa and draw six cards. 
So my Faith is Looting rule is all, putting two negative one negative one counters on all creatures, killing the ox as well as most of uh, Juan's creatures except for his land who's at who's now at one. And then I'll go to combat and I'll hit Juan. For the first time this game he goes below 40, he goes down to 32. And then I'll pass to Juan. Juan about to do the big green boy plays. Starting off with a Crows and Tusker hard cast. So just a 6-5, casually. Triggering the elemental bond to draw a card. He's going to pass to Hog. Hog's going to start off with that uh, sweet, sweet soul ring. Triggering efficient construction to make a Thopter. So this efficient construction is just making a pile of blockers. Every time he plays a mana rock, just makes a blocker. Such a good card. Next up is a Gilded Lotus making a blocker. Tap that Gilded Lotus for mana. What do you know? Here comes... A Mass Manipulation, X equals 3, Stealing, Chainer, Archfiend of Ifner, and Crozen Tusker. Absolutely brutal. A bit of a power swing. From nothing to a big board state, and we all lose our board states, so. Now to Jamie at one life. One of the three Jamie drew off of the Ox includes a Command Beacon, which Jamie will play Crack to get Gonti back to hand and play Gonti. This time Jamie's going to target Hog. Probably looking for a Mana Rock. Some way to get past four mana. Jamie's going to pass to me here. I'm going to choose to Dredge Stinkweed again. I'm going to cast Stinkweed, and then I'm going to pass the turn. Juan's going to activate Nightly at the end of the turn, which I do believe is a hit. Juan's going to start off with a Wolfier Silverheart, and then a Ferris Band Brawler, which will come into play and fight Archfiend of Ifner. But it's also soul bound to the Wolfier, so it's like a, it gets plus four, plus four, so it's like a it's like an 8-7 when it fought the uh, the demon there. Now to Hog, still having uh, my Chainer and Wands, Crows, and Tusker is going to recast Sahili. He's going to cast a Seer's Lantern, triggering efficient construction to make a blocker. And then is going to cast a Wheel of Fortune. I'm going to respond to that by casting a Chaos Warp. And then I decided to use it on the Sahili because he had not activated Sahili yet. So he did not have affinity or anything like that. So I thought it'd be pretty funny to get him while his pants were down. He ends up hitting an island off of the Chaos Warp. So about, at this point, he's probably caught up on his mana. And he plays an Ancient Tomb for turns, so he's definitely caught up on mana. In fact, he's going to be able to recast Sahili a second time this turn. And then he's going to roll Sahili up to give affinity to artifacts. To Mirrodin Besieged. He's going to choose the mode. I believe it's uh, Phyrexian. So at the end of his turn, he'll he'll loot. And if then if he has 15 or more artifacts in the graveyard, target player loses the game. His account's pretty low at this point, though. He just kind of someone, he kind of just wanted the loot effect. Now to Jamie at one life, playing a Jet Medallion. Jamie's going to follow that with a Nihil spell. But I'm going to respond with a Thrill of Possibility so that I can dredge a Shenanigans out of my graveyard before it gets nuked. And then it resolves. Jamie's not impressed with my graveyard, so Jamie passes. So I'll continue along with a Dread Return. And I'll choose Flare of the Hatebound. And I'll use the initial Enter the Battlefield 4 damage trigger to kill my own Chainer. So I can get that back later. And then I'll use uh, Phyrexian Tower to sacrifice Flare, which uh, Flare has Undying, so it'll immediately come back into play. And now it has five power, and it deals five damage. So I do five damage just healing, killing it again. I'll then follow uh, that up with a Shenanigans to shatter the Gilded Lotus. And then I'll cast a Waste Knot. And I will pass the turn to Juan. 
Feeling a little bit better about my board state, except that Nile spell bombs over there staring me down. Here comes Green Rebuild, starting off with a Garrix Pack Leader, drawing off of Elemental Bond. And then a Colonian Hydra, triggering both Pack Leader and Elemental Bond to draw two. Then a Soul Ring in Combat, all of it at Hog, including a 8-7 a, a and an 8-8. Eight, eight. So he'll block both of those so he doesn't take an enormous amount of damage. Hog's uh, still at 21 here. Hogs up, with a ton of mana, ton of mana rocks. And some would say the greatest color combination ever. He's gonna take two damage off of his Ancient Tomb and recast Sahili the Gifted. Rolling Sahili up, making the next spell cost super cheap, is going to Red Sun the Living Bejesus out of the Colonial Hydra. He's then gonna play a Thought Vessel. Making, triggering uh, the efficient construction to make a Thopter. And then a uh, Iron Mirror, triggering efficient construction to make a Thopter. So just constant waves of blockers. And yet somehow Sailor's died like six times this game, like four times, but end step, Jamie is going to roll up that Jeweled Amulet. Kind of, kind of feeling a little low on cards, although that wheel did help. Jamie's gonna crack this Mind Stone to draw a card. And then Jamie's gonna pass the turn. Really just hoping a food chain is in a deck. So I'm gonna start off my turn with the big old eight mana Chainer Nightmare Adept. Then I'll go to combat and swing at Sahili, even though he has a bunch of blockers. Jamie, out of nowhere, used Manifold Key to give my creature unblockable, so I sneak through those blockers, killing Sahili for like the millionth time. End step, Juan's gonna crop rotate a forest into the green castle. And then gonna activate that uh, Nylia to hit a Sirak. So, you know, just drawing cards off of her command uh, the commander as well as all the other draw engines. And then plays in Nykthos for turns, so. Follow that up with a Keeper of Fables, triggering uh, three draw effects. And then plays a Great Henge. That's what that, there it is. There is the, uh, this Sorak is gonna draw him three cards now. Uh, Garrick's Pack Leader, uh, Elemental Bond, and Great Henge. And come in with a plus one, plus one counter. He's gonna activate Nykthos, which generates something like on the order of 14 mana. And then he's going to cast a World Breaker and Shatter Iron Mirror. So he's going to swing from aggressive blocker removal. He's going to cast a Reclamation Sage, shattering a Thopter. And then, of course, triggering uh, the Great Henge to draw a card. And then he's going to play a Renata Call to the Hunt, triggering all three of his draw sources to draw three. That comes in as a 17-3. Uh, so he's going to give Sorak to give it haste. And then he's going to go to combat and try and kill Hog here. Hog will block the 17-3 and then take, uh, I believe it's 16 damage here, going down to three. So Hog's up, uh, a little a little sweating as he's sitting across from, uh, you know, 50 plus power. He's going to cast a Diminishing Returns, causing us to shuffle our graveyards and hands in our... So that's very sad for me. Also very sad for Hog. He reveals the 10 cards that he has to exile as part of Diminishing Returns and reveals a All is Dust, a card that he really would have loved to have drawn here. So he draws his 7 and starts digging for some answers here. So he's going to play a land for a turn and then cast... What would you know? What do you know? It's a time reversal. So he's gonna try and dig for a new hand. Something that he can use to deal with this board state. Jamie's Jamie's eating this up though. Fresh seven is great. Considering Jamie's locked under that Necropotence. Hog's gonna play a doubling season. This is gonna get real interesting. He's gonna float five red and three blue and then activate doubling season using an ancient tomb. So he goes down to one to activate this, this doubling season. But now he's got 10 red and six blue in his pool. 
Uh, also triggered the efficient construction when he cast doubling season. He's gonna cast a Sahili Sublime Artificer now and roll that down to turn that th that Thopter made from efficient construction into another doubling cube, and then activate that doubling cube. So now he has a ton of mana in his pool, and he's gonna use all of that into a Giant's Emily for I believe X is 14 here, so he's gonna do 14 damage to three targets. He really would like to have he couldn't you know do it all to to Wan's face. Uh, he could have killed Jamie, but he decides to destroy uh, Renata, the wolf here. Um, and then before we, before uh, anything else happens, Jamie cracks that Nile spell bomb to exile Wands Graveyard. So just use that Jai's and Lenny Furrow to sweep up some of those annoying creatures. Jamie's up. New grip. Courtesy of Hog. Cabal Therapy, targeting Juan. I'm gonna name Gargos, the the fighting Hydra, but uh, does not find it does not find it in Juan's hand, but does find a Garrick Primal Hunter. So using Cabal Therapy's ability, uh, Jamie's going to sacrifice Gonti in order to make Juan discard Garrick Primal Hunter. Did not want to see uh, another draw wave, another massive harmonize based off of that, and then just gonna recast Gonti. Jamie's gonna choose choose Juan this time, stealing a creature, and then activate Jeweled Amulet to cast that creature. It turns out to be a Hex Drinker, a uh, pretty bonkers level up snake I've never seen before. At the end of uh, uh, Jamie's turn, I'm going to discard a Magus of the Wheel to uh, Chainer's ability, just setting that up for later. And that later is right about right about now. So I'm gonna start my turn, draw for turn. Uh, I'll play a land, and then I'll start this turn off with a good old Warstorm Surge. Cause it's about to get ETB up in here. I'll sacrifice to Phyrexian Tower my uh, Stinkweed Imp. And then I'll discard uh, uh, some some card, I don't remember what it was. To this, uh, to Chainer, so that I can cast Magus of the Wheel out of my graveyard. Triggering War Storm Surge and Flare of the Haybound. So I do three to three, two different targets. I'll use one of those to kill Reclamation Sage and one of those to soften up Keeper of Fables. Then I'm going to activate uh, Magus of the Wheel, so everyone wheels their hands. And from there, I'll create three zombies due to Waste Knot, as well as ten black mana and a bunch of card draw. Uh, I think I end up drawing, I have ten cards in hand after this. Um, 10 black in the pool, and then I'll use those triggers off of Warstorm Surge and Zombies to sweep up the rest of uh, Juan's board. I'll then cast a Plague Crafter, triggering Warstorm Surge, deal three damage to the Ferris brand, band Brawler, and uh, Juan smartly sacrifices his, his Nylia. Jamie's gonna sacrifice, sacrifice the Gonti, and then I'll follow that up with a Gravebreaker Lamia to finish off that Ferris Band Brawler. And I'll put I'll use the triggered ability to put a Corpse Connoisseur into my graveyard, and then I'll use my remaining mana to cast Corpse Connoisseur, putting that into or I'll unearth it, I believe. Yep. And I'll just do the damage directly to uh, Wand's face at this point because I, I need to soften him up. Wan apparently plays some kind of gain life land here. And then recast Snily of the Keen Eyed. And then follows that up with a Gurk Wild Speaker. So just rebuilding at an insane rate here. All because of that sweet, sweet mono green draw power. Cast an Arbor Elf, draw off of Great Henge. Activate Nykthos. Uh, using that mana, he's going to cast a Llanowar Elves, drawing off of Great Henge. Then a Finhorn Elves, drawing off of Great Henge. And then a Shifting Ceratops, drawing off of Great Henge and Elemental Bond. Into a Priest of Titania, you know the drill. He's going to roll up Wildspeaker at this point to untap the, the Green Castle and Nykthos, and then just... Uh, using the remaining mana in his pool, activate Nykthos and Castle. Adding a bunch more mana to his pool so he can keep going. 
And he's going to cast a Verdus Gearhold, putting all those counters onto World Breaker. And then also a Gore Claw. Again. Drawn a bunch. And then he's going to put a Rancor onto World Breaker. And then, oh, there's more. Wait, there's more. There's a Ronus the Indomitable. So drawing a bunch more here. And a Incubation Druid, which will conveniently enough from Great Henge come, with, come into play with a plus one plus a counter on it. Then there's, an, there's another Elvish Mystic, so still going. This is all one turn, by the way. Uh, he had nothing at the beginning of this turn. Okay, he's going to go to combat here. He's going to swing the Rancor up, uh, World Breaker at Hog, and then uh, the Priest of Titania, I believe it is, at uh, Jamie, killing uh, both of them. I'm going to discard an Anger at the end of his turn. Setting up, uh, hopefully, I mean, it's do or die at this point. Like, there's no way I can stop that void state. So I'm going to discard the Stinkweed Imp to Chainer on my upkeep. That way I can dredge it here as, as my draw step. Uh, tips, tips from Jamie. So now Chainer's online. I can cast a creature out of my graveyard, and I will use that to recast Magic to the Wheel. Basically the only trick I got. So I'll recast that as one less due to the Gravebreaker Lamia. And uh, we will uh, cast a Bone Miser. So that I can get uh, extra triggers off of the Magus' uh, discard effect. I'm going to sack a Plague Crafter to my Phyrexian Altar to generate some mana. And then let's crack that, uh, that there Magus of the Wheel. So uh, at this point, I believe... Uh, Juan has three creatures in his hand, and I have one creature in my hand. I'll use all of those Warstorm Surge triggers to just dome him in the face. There's no point in trying to fight his board state. I just try and kill him this turn. So he takes, uh, I believe, uh, four triggers to the face, and I also generate um, ten, uh, nine, nine black mana and some extra card draw here. So I'll draw a fresh ten or so off of the Magus of the Wheel and the Waste Knot and the Bone Miser triggers. And then I uh, managed to draw into the win here. I will use my mana to cast a Massacre Worm, which when it enters the battlefield, triggers Warstorm Surge to do six to his face. And then the negative two, negative two effect will wipe a good chunk of his smaller creatures off the battlefield. And then those Massacre Worm death triggers will cause him to lose 10 or so life and he'll lose the game here. So that ends up wrapping up that crazy game. Uh, um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this one. We did a lot. Uh, Jamie's a great deck builder, and it's really fun to try and pick up these strong, powerful, synergistic decks and try and pilot them. I'm not a great pilot by any means, so I'm, I'm sure there's optimal lines that I missed, but I had a lot of fun playing uh, Chainer. And I know Juan said he was having a blast playing that mono green uh, Nylea deck. He said the most fun he's had in a long time. And Hog always loves Sahili. In fact, he won a... Uh, a pre-con commander league using that Sahili. So, yeah, I hope Jamie gets to come back to our show with some more decks. It was a ton of fun playing them. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching uh, these decks. Us kind of stumble our way through this gameplay. And I hope you uh, didn't mind listening to me for the last half hour, unfortunately. Next time we'll get that audio cleaned up so you can listen to our fun in-game banter. Uh, as always, guys, uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you want to get notifications when new gameplays, deck techs, or when Timmy, Johnny, and Spike argue over EDH and our podcast vodcasts come out every week. And you can check down below for the uh, the these sweet deck lists, including the Gonti Food Chain, the mono black deck that relies on Food Chain to win. So uh, you can understand why Jamie is having a rough game uh, that time around. So thanks for tuning in, and as always, great minds brew alike. Mm -hmm.